Hello, so I'm here with another build, and this one is gonna be very different. First of all, it's a bowgun build, and we are using Trove Explosive on this one. And Trove Explosive damage-wise is really good, because it's really easy to overlap projectiles with all the area Zodiac nodes that we have right now. And it scales really good damage-wise. However, there is two ways to play this build, and it's depending on the awakening you choose. If you're going Origin Awakening, you will need to manage your Overheat. And if you choose Source or Verity, you don't have to manage your Overheat, but you still can benefit from the Overheat accumulation. But about that, a little bit later into the build. Right now, let's start with the default stuff, as you can play it really simple, but the damage benefit you get from playing with a little bit of Overheat is insane, actually. So without further ado, Let's get into the build. Early in the game, skill board can look something like this. So we don't have that many choices for the link wounds, so this is pretty default stuff. So on throw explosive, we want to have additional physical damage, confidence, quick attack, multi-shot and fighting weakness. And the last one is Shadow Watcher. Even though you won't be able to get this early, I highly recommend working for this one, as it gives the most amount of damage from all the links possible. If you don't have Shadow Watcher, you can use Area Effect Link Rune. It's not a bad choice. For movement abilities, it's Instant Acceleration and Aerial Throw together with his arm. Illusion Access for Fire Energy, so Convert to Fire, Extract Energy and Dampen Resource Cost. For Defensive Seal, I picked up Elemental Domain, but you can use Chaos Resist, Elemental Resist or Physical Domain, whatever you need the most. To get also Veil of Protection, because this is the only source of projectile damage shaking decrease in the game, so I highly suggest to pick up that one. Just remember to use Wind Veil. Seal of Condensed Destruction is for the attack seal, but you can also use Seal of Critical Chance, whatever you need the most of the time, with a dampened resource cost. And Shout of Justice, with buff activation upon crop control, to remove the Crowd control from yourself whenever you are inflicted with crowd control. Shadow provocation is here as utility. You get damage multiplier and arm amplification, which is really nice. For shadow provocation, we want to have enhanced effect, increased duration, buff activation, and hit. So it would always proc automatically whenever you get damage. Lingering shout, hushed shout, and shadow power. You don't have to use shadow power. I'm just filling up the skill board. Even 5 links in here are enough. For defense enhance, I'm using Bulwark of Protection, but at the same time, you can use Siphon Life, whatever you prefer the most, with time acceleration and increased duration. For attack enhance, it's Marksman, with enhance effect, increased duration, and time acceleration. For the Zodiacs, this is what you want to pick up Aphros, Forest, Gold. Leaf, Root, Rainbow, Dewdrop, Annihilation, Dust, Scent, Artemis, Spider, Farmer, Leia, and then Hama Specialization, Power of Hit and Area, Desperate Hit and Damage Amplification, and Flame. HP Absorb, Damage Jump, and Area Damage Amplification. I do not suggest to pick up uh, Sand Sculpture, basically projectile count plus strike damage dampening. You get almost the same amount of damage. The amp is around like 2 or 3% on, the, on these nodes. You can, you're not gonna lose that much damage. And at the same time, you could pick up the Discharge Deadly Poison. 
But as I said, plus four projectiles and plus 16 projectile damage dampening equals almost the same amount of damage. For relics, you can start at Spica. Pick up powerful damage and pulverize with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. For caster, for the passive you can pick up enhanced range. And if you don't want to use pick up pulverize, you can use sensory stimulation for physical damage amplification to get a bit cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. If you don't feel like you don't need the area effect, you can also opt into Enhanced Anthem effect, which is really nice when you're leveling. Sabda for the passive, it's Chaos Resistance. And Boreal for the last 15 levels is Enhanced HP, as there is no better choice. For Charms and Blessings, we are looking Alyssa, Lao, or Hamal. Our best choice. I would say going Alyssa 230, Lao 230, and Hamal 140 is our best choice right now. For the charms themselves, you want to pick up critical rate, critical damage as your two main affixes, and third affix doesn't matter. Whatever you can find. For example, I have HP multiplier on one of my charms, HP flat on another, I have maximized damage, and I have chance to deal that maximized damage. Basically, the third affix, I pick up whatever I can find. For unique items, I can only recommend the default ones because this build doesn't have any specific unique. So first one would be Caprizot for the max energies and additional fire damage on every hit. At the same time, you can use Medal of Penance with the Convert Mana node and some stats. This is really nice neck early. For the rings, of course, it's Caster Refraction for the flat critical rate. For the belt, it's Boreal's Horizon for max energies, energy duration, and energy effect. For itemization, I'm gonna keep it simple, but I'm gonna explain some extra stuff. So for the bow gun, you have two choices. You can go a critical rate of 10, which is the highest critical rate bow gun you can have, and not use a caster refraction ring. Or you can go into lowest critical rate bowgun, which is 7, and use caster refraction ring, which is going to help you with your crit rate. So whatever you choose, it's going to be okay. For the affixes themselves, on the bowgun, we are looking for gear critical rate, critical damage, weapon attack damage multiplier, Physical damage flat, weapon speed, and weapon attack damage flat. The priority is still, doesn't matter, do you have gear critical rate 7 or 10 bowgun? You want to roll gear critical rate multiplier on both of those. After that, weapon attack damage multiplier, critical damage, physical flat, and whatever else you can get. For the rings, we are looking for attack critical, critical rate implicit rings, and on those you want to roll attack critical rate multiplier, critical damage multiplier, physical damage multiplier, attack speed multiplier, and then whatever you can get. Stats, resistances, or HPs, whatever you need the most. On the neck, we are looking for critical damage implicit neck, and on non-authority neck, there is not that many stats to roll, so you can only go for physical damage flat and physical damage multiplier. After that, Pick up whatever you need the most. Resistances, HPs, hit rates, it's up to you. For the chest, you want to go with your main defense, in this case is dodge rate. After that you can pick up dodge rate flat or HP multiplier or HP, HP flat. Whatever you need the most. On the suffix side, if you want more offensive roll you can pick up hit rate. If you want defensives, just roll whatever resistances you need the most. On the gloves, you want to roll attack critical rate multiplier and critical damage multiplier on the suffix. And on the prefix, you want attack speed multiplier. After that, you pick up whatever you can. 
Armor multipliers, HP HP is flat, or whatever resistances do you need. On the boot side, the most important one is move speed increase. After that, you can pick up projectile damage multiplier, dodge rate multiplier, and on the suffix, hit rate if you want more offensive option, and resistances. For the magazine, this is the most default magazine with attack critical rate multiplier, critical damage, physical damage multi, physical damage flat, attack speed, and HP flat. There are two ways to do this build. So the one way is to awaken it to origin and add the way he tag. And another way is to go either source or verity. And the biggest thing is that with Origin Awakening, you need to manage your overheat. And that's how it looks like. But the reason we are picking up overheat is because Throw Explosive has a tooltip that says 0 0.8 damage amplification per 1% overheat accumulation. That means we want to keep our overheat at maximum that's possible. But the problem is, with the way the bowgun works, whenever we have too much overheat, we're gonna stop attacking. So that's how it looks like. This is my overheat. I can have up to 1.5k. I keep generating overheat every single time I hit. And I stop. To reset the overheat. It's not long, it's called rapid cooling. It takes around like two seconds or so. So, but with this awakening, we get so much more damage. And of course, you can manage your overheat by using aerial throw and instant acceleration. As I'm using those movement speed movements skills, you can see that I'm losing my overheat. But at the same time, I'm also losing damage. So I'm trying, if you play this build, you kind of want to keep your overheat as much as you can when you are dealing with single target content. When you are playing maps, it's actually not going to be that big of a difference. And on the maps, you kind of keep it naturally because you always move forward really fast. By default, only instant acceleration releases your overheat, and that is 20% on skill use. But at the same time, we want to use link called Cooler, which releases 7%, and extra on the Awakening and Legendary Grade. And we want to link that also to our, to our Aerial Throw. In, and by linking Kula on both of our movement abilities, we're gonna be able to sustain our overheat without overheating and stopping our throw explosive. And the second way is a default way to do this. So we can choose either Source Awakening or Verity Awakening or no Awakening at all. But let's say we want to still benefit from the overheat accumulation to get a damage amplification. And the other way to do this is to pick up a skill called Total Barrage because this one generates 100% overheat on skill use, but it has cooldown. So, you would need to use a total barrage when you're doing maps. So, for example, you enter the map, you, you use it once, you generate full overheat, then you use instant acceleration to remove a little bit of your overheat so you wouldn't wrap it cool. And as long as you stay in combat, your overheat is not gonna diminish. However, if you're using instant acceleration as your movement ability and you pump it in the maps, at some point you want to use total barrage again to generate full overheat and keep your damage up. 
At the same time, you can also use aerial throw in order to not reduce your overheat as much as Sobel Barrage has a long cooldown. This is maybe a little bit more difficult way to do this, but at the same time, you keep your overheat at a pretty high level, but using only aerial throw for your movement, it's not gonna be enough. It's, it's gonna feel really wonky on the maps without using instant acceleration. But basically, this is another way to do this. So this is the skill board later into the game if you are using Origin Awakening. So Shadow Watch or Verity, Explosion Limit Verity, Amplify Physical Projectile. On this one, you can choose either Swords, Origin or Verity, up to you. Mana Storm. I chose Verity, but you can do any other Awakening, whatever you find the most useful. Multi-Shot, again, I would say Verity is probably the best one you can do. Even though Source is gonna work, but plus two projectile count with a dampening is not a good choice. And Concentrated Area Damage. This skill has so much area effect with the Zodiacs that we are using. Concentrated Area Damage is the best choice. You want to awaken this one into Source. After that, I added Blood Explosion with Extract Energy and Dampen Resource Cost together with Poison Damage. So to extract attack speed, if you want to do a little bit more defensive one, you can convert to Cold Damage to extract Elemental Resistances. Marksman with Decrease Duration. However, be careful, do not use Decrease Duration too early. You want to have pretty high uptime on your Marksman to get benefit out of decrease duration. Then of course we are using instant acceleration and aerial throw to manage our overheat. We want cooler with source awakening for extra overheat on skill use and disarm. And if you're not using origin awakening, you are either playing an awakened or you choose to play source or verity. They are both good by the way. This is how your skill board should look like. So Mana Storm, additional physical damage, considered the area damage, amplify physical projectile, multi shot, and shadow watcher. Most of the stuff is similar, it's just that we lost the overheat link rune and we have to use additional physical damage with Source Awakening. If you lack attack speed, you can actually switch this one for quick attack or confidence, one or the other. Another thing is in, in here is that I added Total Barrage with time acceleration to reduce the cooldown as much as possible. And I'm using both Instant Acceleration and Aerial Throw for the movement abilities and Seal of Striking. But you can use Seal of Critical Chance, whatever, you, whatever gives you more damage. As Seal of Striking is going to require quite a bit of damage multiplier on your stats. And this is basically the most optimal setup. You can also add lower armor onto your Illusion Axe or Blood Explosion whenever you unlock more spots. This is everything I wanted to say. This build is really fun and have fun grinding on this one. And if you have any questions, you can ask them on YouTube or you can find me on Twitch. I can help you with this build, with another build and have fun. GG's and see you on the next one.